high calculus one students this is the second and last video that you're going to have to watch on the section 2.2 limits of a function um, it's an infinite limit again uh, but there is a tricky part there's two tricky parts in the limit to be honest first of all it's a trig limit it's uh, inherently harder than uh, those that are not involving trig functions but it's also a two-sided limit and um, we will see that we have to evaluate it from both sides however we can uh, simplify the work because we can actually evaluate both limits at once and we're gonna see how so uh, remember the first thing to do whenever you're faced with a limit like this is to replace here okay well I know very well that cosine of x uh, cosine of z uh, cosine of pi uh, so oh by the way this is the graph of cosine of x And this is the degree of precision you need to answer the problem. So you need to know that the cosine is between negative 1 and 1. And you need to know that it starts at 1. Then every multiple of pi over 2, it decreases by 1 until it reaches pi. Then it increases by 1 until it reaches 2 pi. And then decreases again and so on. You need to know that. And that's the that's the level of precision that I'm expecting you to be able to sketch the graph of cosine. And that's only what's necessary. So, okay, we know, as you can see from that graph, you know that the cosine of pi is negative 1. Okay, so let's write that down. Cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. But what is the secant of pi? Okay, secant of pi is... So you have to remember that secant of x is 1 over the cosine of x. So 1 over the cosine of pi, so it's going to be 1 over negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. Okay, so remember that the first step in this limit, so I'm going to rewrite it, the limit as x is approaching pi of cosine of x over 1 plus secant of x is going to be equal to negative 1 over 1 plus negative 1, which means negative 1 over 0. <clears throat> and again, whenever you get a result like this, what it means is that the limit does not exist, but still we have to distinguish between the three possibilities. Uh, it could be infinity, negative infinity, uh, or d and e. Okay? We have to distinguish between these three possibilities. Now, uh, we have the graph to help us. Actually, uh, we ha you have to be able to recover that graph. Um, the thing is, from here, we have to evaluate both one-sided limits. So evaluate both one-sided limits. Okay, and we're going to do it graphically. Okay, so the limit from below. So the limit as x is approaching pi from below of cosine of x over 1 plus secant of x is equal to so what's happening here x is approaching pi from below so if we look at the curve what's going on okay we see that um, it's approaching negative 1 from above Okay, so let's actually write that down. We know that uh, cosine of x is approaching 1 from above, but a secant of x is a little bit more tricky. Okay, so we have to figure it out. So secant of x, which is equal to 1 over cosine of x, is approaching actually 1 over uh, 1 from a negative one from above okay what am i writing here sorry about that so negative one from above here okay so we know that cosine of x is approaching negative one and it's approaching negative one from values above negative one okay so now what about the secant okay so this is where it gets tricky okay so it's approaching negative one we know that cosine is approaching negative one from above so what does it mean this number right here, just this tiny number, it passes by, so passes by, 
negative uh, 0.9999999 and put as many nines as you want, it passes by this kind of number. Now, if you, on a calculator, you, you, you can either do it really with a calculator or you can imagine it. If you divide one by a number that's just, be, that's just like this way, you're going to get a number. So this number that you're going to get here is going to pass by negative uh, 1.0001. Uh, what I mean is that if this number is slightly above negative 1, this number will be slightly below negative 1. So this number is going to approach negative 1 from below. Okay, that is the tricky part. If you're not convinced of my argument here, uh, literally take your calculator and do one over that number. And what you will see uh, is that you will get a number that is uh, like this, slightly below uh, negative one. So what does it mean? As we replace here, we're going to get negative one from above over, well, you don't need the from above here because remember, it's your numerator. You don't really care if it's approaching negative one from above or from below. It's at the denominator that this is important. So now you're going to get negative one from below. And as you add up these two values, you add up a value that looks like this to one. So what you're going to have is uh, you're going to have a number that is slightly below zero. Okay. So um, what it means is that you have negative one and you divide it by another negative number, but one that is getting closer and closer to zero. So the result will approach positive infinity. Okay. So yeah, in other words, like this, like this right here, uh, it's because you have like it passes by passes by like negative one point, well, actually one, like this is a, this one is an exact one, one plus negative, like something like this, right? So that's why it is zero from below. So it's going to be like a negative number, like zero, 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 one, something like this, let's say. Okay, so we've done the limit from below. Now let's do the limit from above. Well, I have a good new for you, okay? We do it graphically as well, okay? So we can use the same graph like this, and we reach the exact same conclusion. It's that, um, so, uh, we have like the limit, as x is approaching pi from above of cosine of x over 1 plus secant of x. And the idea is we reach the exact same conclusion that cosine of x is approaching negative 1 from above and that secant of x, by the same argument, is approaching negative 1 from below. So in other words, we don't even have to redo the entire work we can actually just write, uh, like, let's just write this step plus negative one from below. And since we already did all the mental work, we have like negative one over one from below, which means infinity. <clears throat> so what we got is that both one-sided limit match to infinity which means that this overall limit, this two-sided limit, turns out to be infinity as well. I hope this helps. See you in the next video.